So Vasil Lomachenko managed to force Nicholas Walters to retire after seven rounds for a successful defense of his WBO Super Featherweight Championship. Um, did a solid job. He's looked uh, fairly similar to what we've recently seen of him. You know, the Roman Martinez fight, uh, the Romulo Kosicha fight. And, you know, just the, the strategy that he used overall for Walters. I did think that Walters um, was doing a couple of good things in there early on initially. But it seemed like he didn't even realize what was actually working out for him. Like, I thought the jab was working out for him fairly well early. And um, some of that body punching was working out pretty well for him early. But he didn't keep either one of those things up enough. Nor did he utilize enough uh, movement or enough uh, proper gauging of distance and range in order to um, to really make it a more competitive fight. Uh, pretty much after the fourth round, Lomachenko started really pulling away. Especially in that seventh round, Lomachenko um, it looked like uh, managed to wobble Walters a little bit. Had him hurt, had him flummoxed, had him really just confused, uh, baffled with regards to uh, the, the variety of um, movement and uh, foot speed that he was um, showing him. And, um, you know, just Walters pretty much just uh, packed it in. He just uh, gave up. He capitulated and, you know, uh, called it a day after uh, seven rounds. Um, seven rounds, I thought, was a little bit more competitive than most people had it, definitely more so than um, HBO had it. But uh, Lomachenko was definitely turning the tide in his favor um, on his way to uh, scoring that stoppage. Um, so, you know, just a solid uh, victory for Vasil Lomachenko. Nicholas Walters, definitely his stock drops in an in a immense fashion after the way he looked in there. Um, you know, th some of the people that I was um, talking with about this fight, you know, shout out to, to my boys at the Boxing Coalition. Um, we're saying that, and uh, I saw some, I forgot exactly who said it on Twitter as well. We're saying that Nicholas Walters looked um, drained in the ring. I did think he looked a little bit dry, and um, Lomachenko did weigh 137 as compared to 136 for Walters. Um, and Walters, you know, had, was looking a bit fat uh, before he's decided to start getting in shape, getting in training camp for this fight. But regardless of any of that, you know, if he was drained or what have you, it's Walters' fault in the end. You know, it's not to, meant to take um, anything away from Lomachenko necessarily. Uh, Lomachenko went in there and he did the job. He looked uh, about as impressive um, aside from the lack of the, the explosive KO as he did against uh, Roman Martinez. And just did a solid job. You know, definitely stamped his name as one of the guys to be to be reckoned with at 130 pounds. Um, I do think a lot of the pound for pound uh, stuff and especially the talk about him fighting either Pacquiao or Terrence Crawford is premature in the for, in the former case and um, completely ridiculous in the latter case. You know, let, no, he shouldn't be fighting Pacquiao or Terrence Crawford. Pacquiao knocks him out. Crawford wins a decision. If not, knocks him out um, over him, a wide one. And, um, you know, like he, if we're, if we're going to start matching him up against tough fighters, let's match him up against the toughest fighters of his division still, that very division. Nicholas Walters for all... You know, as good as he was at 126 pounds, hadn't really proven anything at 130 pounds. He proved that he could get a draw, a disputed draw, yes, but a draw nonetheless, against um, Jason Sosa, who of course is a champion. But otherwise, it was all up in the air. You know, he also proved that he could be, you know, uh, he could beat Mariaga when Mariaga was a featherweight and he was a super featherweight. So, um, aside from that, you know, that that was all there was to it. But you know, Lomachenko, of course, you know, he got a, a good name. On his record, a good win under there, and um, so it'll be interesting to see where he goes from here. They, you know, when Max Kellerman asked him in the post-fight interview, he mentioned uh, Francisco Vargas as a potential next opponent. I like that fight. I like that opponent. Um, I would also like Orlando Salido, especially. To me, the the first order of business should be to fight Salido, simply because of the fact that he's the man that gave you the loss. To me, if you want to legitimize your spot as a pound-for-pound -pound fighter. You need to avenge the loss that the the only man gave you, the 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 the, the one man who recently beat you. You know he gave it to you. You know you need a that that should be the first order of business, regardless of any sort of financial constraints. Whatever you got to do to get that fight made, you get that fight made. Period. Point blank. If somebody beats me or at something, regardless of whatever what it is, checkers. I don't give a fuck. I'm going back to get my my revenge asap, as soon as possible. No, you know regardless of what I got to go through in order to do it. So that should be the same case, especially with um, professional fighting. You know, that's what they do. You know, go in the way, you go in the ring, you fight. So um, should, should, I'd like to see the Salido rematch first and foremost. I wouldn't mind if he was to fight his mandatory Miguel Burchelt because Burchelt righteously deserves 
a shot at the WBO title. You know, he was supposed to be the mandatory for, or he was the mandatory. Matter of fact, he they actually were uh, two weeks out from actually fighting between uh, Roman Martinez and Miguel Burchelt when Martinez pulled out with a supposed uh, uh, injury. I forgot even what injury it was. It was to his hand or his elbow or something. And then, like, a few weeks later, magically, all of a sudden, Martinez is signed to fight uh, Vasyl Lomachenko, which is, you know, a blatant um, a breach of the contract that he engaged in with uh, Burchelt. So, Burchelt should be next in action, hopefully. I mean, I'm not exactly sure um, how much step-aside money or what the conditions of top rank get, pan him off to step-aside Um allude to uh it's it's entirely possible that Lomachenko may get another fight in between now and then because I did hear the the possibility of Lomachenko fighting somebody else next who knows maybe he'll even fight uh Turtzak Kokitjen the man who uh engaged in a fantastic fight of the year a few years back against Orlando Salido a remarkable fight I definitely suggest that to anybody who wants to see just uh one of the nastiest fights you could ever imagine but um I mean that, that wouldn't be a bad opponent uh but Outside of Salido and Burchell, I, I think the, the most suitable opponent for Lomachenko, especially if he wants to prove that he's the best fighter at the weight class, would be to fight the winner of Jezero Corrales versus Takashi Uchiyama too. Um, a little over a year ago, the two best fighters at Super Featherweight were Takashi Uchiyama and Takashi Miura. Francisco Vargas did his thing against Takashi Miura, managed to, to knock him out, brilliant come from behind victory. And then, of course, you know, he went on to defeat Salido. And Jezero Corrales pulled off a monstrous and huge upset second round knockout over Takashi Uchiyama. You know, just one of the more shocking type of upsets over, you know, uh, a proven standing champion. Um, reminded me a little bit of Mayorga versus uh, Vernon Forrest. I, like, it blew me away, it blew a lot of people away in terms of, you know, people that really knew how good Uchiyama was, that knew he was the legitimate number one fighter at the weight class. To see him just get rolled like like uh, Corrales did him was extremely impressive. By far the most impressive win in that division, and probably the most impressive win in that division, f- probably since shit, probably since like Pacquiao and Marquez were planning their trade there. Really, um, so to me, uh, if he, if he was to fight Jezero Corrales, Francisco Vargas, Orlando Salido, or Miguel Burchelt, I, I wouldn't really argue or or be too um, critical of any of those fights at all. You know, like uh, and any one of those fights, I think, is, uh, is a legitimate fight for him, a legitimate challenge. Um, you know, those are pretty much his peers, but basically right now. And then, uh, of course, you know, you got Jason Sosa out there. You got um, Jose Pedraza out there. Um, you know, and then the, the possibility of if Gervonta Davis manages to defeat him or um, depending on what Sosa does in the near future. You know, they, they may be in that, in that running too, but of course, you know, there's a little bit of a promotional obstacle involved with uh with those guys um to a certain degree at least um with uh with Pedraza more so than and Pedraza and Davis more so than than Sosa anyway um but to me those are the those are the guys that he should be looking to fight next uh as for Walters I think it's going to be a much much tougher road to hoe man it's going to be real real difficult you know um Quinn on HBO was bad enough but when you start blaming your poor performance and your quit job on HBO on HBO like when you start blaming Max and HBO the HBO uh staff and and the and um the execs and stuff for for your poor performance for your anticlimactic performance you know for your non-performance essentially um for a performance that looks really bad coming off of you know the replay of Ward Kovalev which was a, a very very good fight um, a very good and competitive fight, and you you turn in that type of performance, it's it's not gonna be a good look, man. So I doubt we'll be seeing uh, Walters on HBO anytime soon. Um, and considering the fact that, it, from what I understand, I believe he signed a contract extension with Top Rank in order to get this fight, I think we're gonna probably see Walters. Um, you know, not in the most gracious of matchups for him. I think we're probably gonna see him as the B side from now on. He's gonna be. Uh, uh, somebody's gonna do a Magdaleno Donaire to him is is what I think is gonna wind up happening with Walters or I uh, should a Donaire Walters really you know I think uh, now that he has that loss and um, as losing the way that he did I think uh, it's probable probable he'll wind up uh, getting moved up to lightweight um, getting fed to somebody I don't know uh, anybody I mean there's a lot of there's a lot of really good lightweights lightweight division is definitely picked up uh, this year there's several guys that could potentially um, wind up fighting Walters you know could send him over to England for Terry Flanagan. Uh, Robert Easter Jr. If um, Aram decides to do a little more business with Al Heyman, 
you know, uh, Walters now has shown himself to be a, um, uh, what do you call it, a negli- a, not a negligible, an expendable asset. So <laughs> that's definitely an expendable asset in order to do some business between uh, Aram and, um, and Heyman if uh, they want to make some, maybe like a Crawford Garcia fight or something like that. Um, uh, Danny or Mikey. Um, or should even Walters versus Mikey, my, Walters versus Lenars, my, Walters versus Latich, I mean, who knows? You never know. Uh, but yeah, for Walters, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be real difficult. I, I really doubt we'll see him uh, reach the highs that he did when he defeated Darnier or even Darchinian. Really, you know, I think it's it's gonna be probably downhill for him, especially with regard to you know once uh, somebody makes you quit, it becomes that much easier to quit again in the future. You know, and we saw that with Victor Ortiz, for instance. You know, and Ortiz took a lot more damage. Um, against Maidana and against Josecito Lopez than Walters did here against Lomachenko. He was uh, he was he was shattered mentally. That was pretty much all there was to it. But you know, solid win for Lomachenko, as I mentioned. You know, those uh, those are the names. That, just to recap again: Vargas, Corrales, uh, Burchelt, and Toledo. To me, are the the main guys that I'd like to see Lomachenko fight in the future. Who knows? Maybe um, Bob Aram will even. Uh, Make Oscar Valdez, uh, or not make him, but you know, maybe he'll uh, make an offer in order to get Oscar Valdez to move up and fight Lomachenko. Although I, I kind of doubt that. I think um, they're, he's going to try and build the two of them up both as long as possible without having them fight each other, and just and try and have them fight each other if anything in the future. If they if uh, Valdez stays undefeated and if Lomachenko doesn't rack up any more losses, um, when they're both of their names are are much bigger and they can make that like a legitimate um, small level pay per view type of fight. Um, so, I really don't see that happening in the near future, at least. Just the name I like to throw out there. But, um, just solid win for Lomachenko once more. Uh, you know, tough, tough loss for Walters. And, I mean, I pretty much said uh, my whole piece on the whole thing. Uh, so, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.